together with each other to pray and daven for the complete healing of everyone and whoever needs it, God should give them full healing and blessings. And we're gathering together to learn the mitzvot of hafrashat chala and to dedicate it for peace, harmony, health, and goodness for everyone who needs it. Um, I'm just going to ask everyone that's calling on Zoom to mute their phone, and then I will leave some time for question and answer at the end. So if anybody has questions, they could just ask me at the end, but if you could mute that, that way, um, we will not get an echo. Uh, so we were going to, we're, so we're just, we're, we want to make sure that um, everybody has your ingredients ready, and after you get your ingredients ready, we'll get started. I'm just going to do a little discussion and a, and a talk about the mitzvah of hafrashat chala, and then after that, we will get into doing the actual mitzvah of making the bread for Shabbat. So one of the things I wanted to mention to you guys, one of the things that I wanted to, thank you so much for joining, one of the ones I wanted to t um, tell you guys that I don't know if you know or not, um, it is in the book of, sorry, I'm just going to see if I can um, mute off. So there, there is a beautiful, there is a, the mitzvah of Hafrashat Chala is a, I just want to make sure that is everyone in Nesach able to hear me from the live? If you could just um, catch, write a message so I can know and if everyone on the Zoom can hear me. So the mitzvah of Hafrashat Chala is a mitzvah that we actually learn from the book of Bamidbar. It is in this book, I'm just going to also record it, I think I might be able to. It's from the book of Bamidbar. So it's in this book that we learn about the mitzvah of doing Hafrashat Chala. You know, I always say that uh, the book of Chumash is my encyclopedia and the book uh, is the, it's the book that I go to for discussions, reading, learning, and it's the weekly Torah portion that we learn, the five books of the Chumash, the book that Moshe received, and with the holiday of Shavuot coming up, and the celebration, and the birthday of the receiving of the Torah. So it's just, it's nice to know that it's in this, we, in this book, the book of Bamidbar, chapter 15, is where we learn about the mitzvah of doing the desert, the wilderness, and they were in the desert for 40 years. So a lot of times, you know, people think Bamidbar, the desert, no food, no this. How is this even a good thing? It was so much easier for us when we were back in Egypt. And then God starts the book of Bamidbar by telling us, which is so beautiful. It's like a beautiful poem that God tells B'nai Israel in the book of Bamidbar, which is um, this week's parsha that we're going to read about. That God tells us, if you listen to me, if you do what I ask you, if you obey me, if you listen to me, then I will bless you with everything that you need. As you can see, Bamidbar in the first portion, Hashem um, spoke to Moshe about the wilderness in the Sinai, in the tent meeting, on the first of the second month, the second year after their exodus, land of Egypt. So then God says to them, take a census, take a count of who everyone is, what, how many are in each group, which is also a beautiful idea that God wanted everyone to know that each and every person has a unique status, unique special place, unique location for God that has given it to them personally. So every tribe had their own flag and they were placed in a particular location, which also shows us the beauty and the specialness get that God sees in every single one of us. And another beautiful thing is that the B'nai Israel did not get into a fight with each other. They did not say, I don't want to be there. I want to be next to that one. I don't want to be here. I want to be that. I don't want to be part of the tribe of Kohanim. I want to be part of B'nai Israel. Everyone was fine being where they were. And that's what teaches us about the unity and harmony in a home. That when a family is able to 
follow the instruction and follow the guidelines, things work out a lot smoothly and easily. But if everybody is going to challenge and say, why am I this and not that? I want to be the first child, not the last child. I want to be number here. So this book of Bamidbar teaches us about having appreciation for who we are and our status and where we, you know, our, our location, even in the family. Um, and also the word Bamidbar is the same word as Medaber. So in the Bamidbar, God spoke to Bnei Israel and told him where they need to be and what role they need to have. So that's another thing is that following instruction is the same word as the word Bamidbar. And the month of Sivan is the month that we celebrate for receiving the Torah. So we have the holiday of Shavuot where we stay up and we celebrate again the receiving of the Torah. And another thing that Shavuot teaches us is about getting ready emotionally, mentally to prepare ourselves to receive the Torah again, like a birthday. So every year you prepare yourself to receive the Torah again. And then... Um, and every time we work on ourselves to becoming a better person, to becoming a, a recipient of it, and also what made Mount Sinai so special than the other Torah is that it was very humble. That my, Mount Sinai was the smallest Torah, and it was very humble and in receiving, and that's what led them to receive the Torah. So we're going to start our first step of making our dough. Um, if everyone can get their sugar and their yeast, and their bowls ready so we could start with um, putting the ingredients together so we're going to start by putting the sugar and the yeast in there and for the people that are making the smaller portion the smaller portion you will need two tablespoon of sugar and you will need one tablespoon of yeast and to mix it with one cup of warm water so sugar, yeast, and water. And the sugar, I say, is that when you pour that into your bowl, you bless Hashem for all the good things that you have. You empty out your bowl and you start. Did you have a question, Ida? Did you have a question? Or was unmuted? Aziza. No. Aziza, but I need a screen on our camera. Okay, perfect. Okay, hold on. I love Thank you so much. Okay. Um. Okay, so as so the sugar, we're gonna put in the sugar first, and the sugar as we pour in the sugar, we thank God for all the blessings that we have in our life. You know, especially during right now and the life that we have right now, we realize how much blessings we used to have. Now that things that have been taken away from us, being able to go outside, going, being able to go for a walk, being able to visit our family, now we realize how many blessings and how many good things we had in our life and we didn't even recognize how f valuable they were so when we put the sugar in we thank god um salt measuring is incorrect the salt for three uh for three cups of flour is one teaspoon of salt so um kathy is asking me the salt measuring for the bigger portion is different so i'm not sure which portion you're making so uh, as I was saying is that it's important to have appreciation for the things that we have in our life. So the sugar, we compare it to the blessings in our life. And then we add the yeast. We put one tablespoon of yeast with one cup of warm water. And the yeast, we compare it to the soul and the neshama that we have in our body. The soul that helps our heart to beat, allows our body to be able to breathe. So we always tell ourselves, as long as I have that godly soul within my body, I am very blessed. And that's what I say the Mode'ani with every morning when I wake up. I thank Hashem for the blessing of giving me my neshama. So, uh, and the water, the water is the beautiful ingredient that brings everything together. And what I was saying is that what's so amazing is every morning, the morning bracha that we say there is a bracha that says blessed are you god that makes the land stand on earth and i was asking my husband i said what does that mean why are we saying the blessing of that so he said for us if you take a cup of water and you take the smallest rock you may not have that rock stand on top because it will sink to the bottom 
because of gravity. However, God is able to hold all the lands in the world on top of the ocean because under the land it's all water. The earth has more water than it has land, just like our body. We have more water than our other organs in our body. And when we put the water in, we know that it's something that comes from God. And the water is what brings things together. It unites it. Now, where does God water come from? Where does rain come from? It comes from Shemaim. It comes from the heavens. It comes from God. So the water is the sole na natural process that connects us with God. So we mix the yeast, sugar, and water. We mix all of them together. So for the next part of our ingredients, what we need to do is we need to put the salt in the back of our flour. You have to mix the salt with the flour and you have to make the salt get everywhere. So you don't want it um, to get only in one place. So take the salt and mix it in the bag of flour. Um, if anyone on Facebook has a question, you could message me and I can read it. Yes, Benjamin? Why well, would I have to unmute you first? Um, hold on. Yes. Um, yes, Benjamin. Oh, I don't know. Can you can you text? I can't unmute it. Okay, he wants to know one teaspoon or one tablespoon. No, for the small portion, you need one teaspoon. If you're doing three cups of flour, then you need one teaspoon of salt. Okay. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. So you put one teaspoon of salt for three cups of flour. And then you mix the flour with the salt. After you mix the flour with the salt, you mix it very well. And the flour, we compare to the um, essence of what human beings are made out of. We were made out of the dust and the earth. And we always remind ourselves that every human being is made from the earth. And after 120 years, goes back to the earth. So the importance of being humble and understanding that no matter how much wealth we have, how much education we have, whether we're beautiful, whether we have beautiful hair, these are all things that come from God. We should never get carried away and become so um, egotistic and so self-centered because everything we have is a gift from God. So when we look at the flower, that's what we remind ourselves. And also I wanted to um, show you guys, um, I don't know if you know, but this is a, sorry, and also the story of Ruth. You know, the story, we hear the story of Ruth for Shavuot. Ruth was Naomi's daughter-in-law that Boaz and her got married when she was harvesting the land and she was so modest with the way she picked up the wheat. So it's a beautiful thing. I just wanted to show you guys that how amazing it is that even for wheat, you know, first you plant it in the earth and it takes time for the wheat to start growing. Once it starts growing, it looks like this. Very green, very green, and it's still not ready for you to harvest it. After some time, only when it gets to this color, this goldish color, you know it's time for you to harvest it. And then after you harvest it, they have to take it and start threshing it, separating the wheat from the stack, and then they grind it, and then we get what we have now, which is flour. So it's important to know how much work goes into us being able to have the cup of flour that we have at home, how much effort goes into that. So after you mix the flour with the salt, so you, after this, you're going to have one more ingredient left, which is one fourth of a cup of oil. So, so you should wash your hands, get your hands ready and cleaned up. And slowly, you're going to start, after your hands are washed, you're slowly going to add the flour into your mixture. So you need to make sure your hands are clean. 
because you're going to start doing the kneading after that. So we'll just wait a few people when to go wash their hands. So uh, once we put in the flour, our oil is going to be the last part as we're kneading it to get it ready. The oil is what's going to make it softer. And I always tell people the most beautiful thing about making the bread is also the prayers and thinking about other people and davening and having, having everyone else in mind that can benefit from the prayers, which makes it even more special. So, okay. So anyone on Facebook has questions? You want to text it, type it. So gradually, now what I need you to do is start mixing your flour inside your wet um, mixture where you have the water and sugar and yeast. So slowly start putting the flour in your bowl and you're going to start mixing it. You could start mixing it with a fork first and then you're going to need your hand. You're going to need your hand to smoosh it in and bring the ingredients together. So you have to make sure to get it all mixed in very, very well for the dough to come out well. Start putting it in. So once we start, thank you so much for the heart. So once we start mixing it, you will see it's going to take time. So you just have to be mindful that it's not going to turn into a dough right away. It's going to take a little bit of a time until it becomes like a dough. So there will be a time that you can't mix it just with the fork and you have to you, uh, use your hand to be able to mix it well. Um, this one. Okay. So you just have to start mixing it and as you're mixing it, start praying. And as I said to you guys right now, it's a very important time to pray for healing, to play, pray for the healing for everyone that needs it. Many of us might know people in our, um, in our extended circle, in our community. Everyone should have complete healing, bracha and hatzlacha. They should have peace and harmony in their home. People should be blessed with everything that they need. Our prayers work the same way that you know how you take a medicine in your mouth and it affects your whole body. Prayers also work the same way. It's like a spiritual prayer as we pray from our home, but it affects everyone else that we are praying for because we are all connected to each other. Just like how a dough starts with being separated, but when you start mixing it in, it becomes a one unit. It becomes one dough, which makes it very special to teach us about the importance of coming together and unity. You guys are doing really nice, Kyla and Benjamin. Look at the beautiful dough. Let's see how your doughs are coming out. You want, is it dough yet? Keep going. And don't forget your oil. You need one fourth of a cup oil to add to it to mix it. Without, uh, without the oil, it's going to come out so dry. So as you're making your dough, if you notice that it's overly wet and sticky, then you add a little bit of flour. But if you notice that it's way too dry, then you add more oil or water. So if it's dry, you add oil or water. And if it's wet, you add flour to it to be able to get that right texture. And, and the texture takes time. Like I always say, in order for the dough to come out well, it doesn't just happen. You have to keep mixing it with your hand. You have to keep mixing it to be able to give it that right texture for it to be able to come out well. And also another beautiful thing with this mitzvah is that, you know, you get to share it. You know, once you make the dough, once you make the bread, you get to say more blessings on it, you get to say more bracha on it, which makes it a very special way to connect with everyone else and be able to have it on your Shabbat table. And the mitzvah 
of having bread of you know it's also to remind us of when we were do we were when we were in the midbar when we were in the desert for 40 years on friday god gave us double the amount of bread every other day of the week he gave us one bread but on friday he brought down two loaves of bread in honor of shabbat so so that on saturday we don't have to work so what does that te te teach us we carry that on with us that on Fridays we make the bread for Shabbat, the bread for Saturday from Friday. And to remind ourselves on Friday night, we say Hamotzi on two loaves of bread, to remember that the same way that in the desert God gave us the manna twice on Friday and prepared one for Saturday. That's why I say Hamotzi on two loaves of bread on Friday night because I have belief that God has provided me what I needed for Shabbat throughout the week, which is a very special lesson for us. And also, you know, last week's parsha, we were learning about the mitzvah of Shemitah, that during the land of Eretz Israel, um, when, you know, during the time of the Beit HaMikdash, everyone worked um, twice, that, you know, that they worked, sorry, they worked for six years. And on the seventh year, it was the year of Shemitah. So on the seventh year, they, oh, sorry, sorry. I was saying that the last week's parsha we were learning that B'nai Yisrael worked for six years and on the seventh year, they rested. They weren't allowed to touch the land. They weren't allowed to harvest or sell anything from the land. And they had to leave it for the people that were poor or had a hard time and they would go take from the land. Again, it taught us about the mitzvah of thinking about other people and having other people in mind. So on the seventh year, it was about leaving it to everyone else to benefit from. And that's the same thing. For six days, we work, we go to school, we do this, we do everything we need. But on the seventh day, it's the day of rest. God says rest, so we rest. So through, from Sunday to Friday, you work, you work the land, you do whatever you need. And on Shabbat, Friday afternoon is your day of rest. It's your time of meditation for your family to be able to take it easy, to be able to relax and enjoy. And that's what makes us different as humans is that we need to have that time to like meditate and work on ourselves and have gratitude for the things that God has blessed us with. We're not just robots or, you know, people like machinery to just work, work, work. God wants us to also enjoy and take pleasure of the things that we do have. So that's a very special lesson that God wanted us to know is that when I make an effort to make the bread on Thursday or on Friday for Shabbat, the whole process is reminding me to slow down because Shabbat is coming. The day of rest is coming. Just like every day, you wake up in the morning and at night you rest because our bodies also need time to rest, to rejuvenate, to start again for the next day. But if we don't rest, we can't really function. So we need to have that balance between work and resting. Then that's what makes our life different because we're, we don't believe that we were just sent into this world to just work without having appreciation, without having recognition in the things we have. Part of having recognition and appreciation is slowing down. So even with the dough, right now I'm telling you, knead the dough, use your hand, use your force, do everything you can. But once you mix it, now you have to let it rest. Even the dough, you have to let it rest to make sure it, um, it will rise, to make sure it has time to do what it's supposed to. Um, just checking in. Anybody on Facebook has a question? Are you following along okay? If you guys want a message, um, comment below. Or on Zoom, anybody has a question? You guys are doing okay? Very nice. So anybody on Facebook, if you have a question, you could type it in the comments and I can see it and answer you. So as we're making the dough, like I was telling you, it's really important um, to know that in order for the dough to come out good, we also need to, need to give it time to rest. So you can't just make your dough, put it in the oven and bake it. No, the dough has to have time for it to rest. Otherwise, what are you going to get? Matzah. 
the unleavened bread that we had for Passover because we didn't have time to let it rise. So for the bread that you want to come out soft, you have to let the bread rise or else it's going to come out very crackery and crispy. And so the, in order for the uh, bread to rise, once it becomes a full dough, it becomes a, like a nice dough and every piece is connected to each other, it almost feels like Play-Doh, then you can put it in a plastic bag to let it rise because you have, yes. Is there a question? Any questions? Oh, okay. So in order for it, in order for it to, hello, yes, yes, Ida. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Sure. Why do we cover the hello when we want to say the proper? Beautiful question. Beautiful question. So she asked on face, on sorry, on Zoom. They asked what? Sorry, my son. The volume is very low. Oh. Is it better if I speak closer? Do you hear me better if I speak like this? I'm having some technical difficulty with the Facebook connection. Hopefully the Zoom upload, I will also upload it after so you guys can hear it. Let me know if this sounds any better. Um, I actually, hold on one second. Sorry, I, I will answer it in a minute. Just. I'm going to see if I use this, it will make it better. One second. Do you hear me better with this? Let me know if on Facebook, if you hear me better. Do you hear me better if I talk through this? Let me know if this sounds better. Okay, so what I was, someone was asking me, um, why do we cover, why cover the bread on Friday night? Why do we have to cover it? So the answer is that it's very interesting and a very beautiful question to ask. God wanted us to know that every day of the week, we always say um, bracha and the hamotzi first. And it's just a lesson for us to understand how important it is that we treat each other. The reason we cover it, there's two reasons actually. One is to remind us that when we were in the Midbar, there were two kinds of a cloud that was protecting us from any harm and anything that would come down from the sky. There was a cloud on top and a cloud at the bottom. So we usually have a tray uh, under the bread and then we have the bread and we cover the bread. So one is to remind us of the anime kavod, the cloud that covered the mana that came down to protect it. And another lesson is to teach us that because the bread is the most essential part of what we eat, and now he, we, here we are on the Shabbat table, what do we say the blessing over first? The, the kiddush, the grape juice. So God said, cover the bread so that the bread shouldn't get embarrassed that you say in Kiddush before the bread. But then you come and say, what are you talking about? That's a bread, crepe juice, they don't have feelings. So it says that when we learn to be so mindful of these things with food, inanimate objects, how much more so we're going to pay attention when it comes to human beings' feelings. That how important it is that we be mindful of our actions, of our behaviors, and how we relate to each other. That we should never hurt or embarrass another human being. So that's why we cover the bread, not to embarrass it that we're saying Kiddush first. Did that answer your question? Yeah, so, but it's a, it's a very beautiful question. Um, it's a very beautiful question to have in mind. And someone asked me, so the the reason we have the two different portion of bread is like the measurement is uh, we want to make sure not to waste any dough and not to waste any flour. Not everybody always ends up using five pounds of dough every week. So I always say, you know, my husband did a lot of research that even if you make three cups of flour in honor of Shabbat, you made uh, bread in your home, that's also the mitzvah of lechem mishneh, because you're supposed to have two breads to say hamotzi on. And if you happen to make five pounds of dough, 
Then you also do the mitzvah of hafrashat challah, of separating the dough. But if sometimes you don't end up using five pounds of dough, then whatever minimum bread that you even make, you tell yourself, I am doing this in honor of Shabbat. I am making two loaves of bread in honor of Shabbat. Um, Shirley, are you on Zoom? Shirley is going to be our friend who's going to say the hafrasha. Mm. Okay, sure. I just wanted to make sure that you were on. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we have um, a friend of ours, Shirley, that lo um, logged on on Zoom. She's the one who's making the five pounds of dough, and she's going to say the blessing so that we get to hear her say it because she's going to make the five pounds and more. And another thing to remember is that, you know, on Friday night when you're at a Shabbat table, the same way the head person of the house says the bracha and everybody says amen and you eat the grape juice. The, the head person of the house says the hamotzi and everybody says amen and then the head person of the house even like you know on Havdalah time they say Havdalah and we say amen. It teaches us about unity and coming together that even if not everybody made five pounds we still could be united and join each other to be able to do the blessing of the hafrasha by listening. So if the, for the people that are hoping to make their bread today, the bread comes out the best the day you made it. So if you could bake it today it would be the best. Make sure to keep it in a Ziploc bag. Let it rise minimum of half an hour to an hour. Let it sit in the plastic bag. And after half an hour to an hour, you could take the dough kneaded, shape it, and then let it sit again. Um, can you guys hear me if I don't push the button on Facebook? Can you just comment if you could hear me if I'm not pushing the button? Let me know if you guys can hear me on Facebook. Um, so the on uh, what I was saying is that if you don't make it, tonight that you have to make sure to leave it in a refrigerator in a bag and also it's going to rise even in the fridge it's going to rise so when it rises you just have to be mindful of having a bag that will not get all over your um, refrigerator but if you're making it tonight leave it in the bag leave it in a plastic bag let it rise and then after it rises it um, you can shape it and then you let it rise again after you shaped it. Um, can someone on Facebook please comment if you could hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, yes, Benjamin. Um, we can hear you. <laughs> you can, thank you so much. I'm glad you could hear me. Um, I'm just checking on Facebook. Can you guys hear me? Do you hear me? they hear me okay I hope they can so so I was saying that if you if you're going to make it to, thank you so you could hear me even without the headset I'm hoping so if you're going to make it tomorrow you have to make sure to leave it in the fridge knead it again tomorrow let it rise shape it and then let it rise again before you put it in the oven so you have to let it rise twice so and also if you like it to get that brownish dark color what i was saying is that if you do the double egg wash it will make it more darker if you do the egg wash twice um if you and also on top of it you could put sesame poppy seed whatever you like and the shape i'm not very particular on style of how you shape it there are many many options on youtube that you could look up I like to make small rolls and that way when you have extra, you could use it the next day if you have extra. I'm just going to drink some water now. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam shehakol niya bitbaro. Oh, that's my favorite drink when I'm thirsty. We're so blessed and lucky to be able to drink water. Um, when I was in seminary in Israel, this is very interesting, there was a student there that could not drink water. 
she did not have the ability to drink water so they had something connected to her kidney that when she would get thirsty that's how they would give her water so we have to always be so grateful for all these beautiful blessings that we have that we can drink that we can see that we can talk and the wonders of god we're very very blessed it's um, something very special that we should never take for granted of how fortunate we are how blessed we are and every part of our body that works it's a tremendous blessing from god um, if any of you ever get the chance, I would highly recommend you to look over the morning blessings that we say, you know, every morning after thanking God for returning our soul, there's a few blessings that we say. It's so beautiful. We thank God for giving us clothing, for giving us everything that we need, give, making our legs strong so we could take steps. It's just so many beautiful blessings that we don't always pay attention to. And it's important to be mindful of how lucky we are that we're able to have these blessings. Um, I'm just going to check in with Shirley. Shirley, how are you doing? Uh, is your dough um, almost there? Sorry. I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, perfect. You have the, the Yehirat zone also, or you have, you said you have the bracha, right? Yeah, so then, and the, um, one minute, okay, so we're going to have Shirley on the phone, so whoever would, uh, whoever has made the dough, Shirley has made the five pounds, so she's going to be our designated representative that's going to say the bracha, and because it's live, we could say amen to it since it's live, so she's made the, she made the dough, so she's going to do the mitzvah of lehafrish chala. What does the word lehafrish chala mean? During the time when we had the Beit Hamikdash, every woman that would make dough, they would separate a portion, a loaf side of size of a bread, and they would take it to the Kohanim as a bread. But right now, because we don't have the Beit Hamikdash, we don't have um, the temple and the the high priest to take the dough to. We burn the small portion instead because we don't have the Kohanim to give it to. And Be'ezrat Hashem, when the third Beit HaMikdash gets built, we'll be able to give it to them. We will be able to give it to them as a whole loaf of bread for them to give to their family. So she, now she's going to thank Hashem for the mitzvah of doing the mitzvah of Hafashat Chala because she made the five pounds and more, which is 12 cups of flour and more that you have to make to be able to say the bracha. Okay, Shirley, we're ready whenever you are. Okay, do are we gonna say uh do you wanna add some report to that after and uh Yes, yeah, so whoever wants, um you don't have to say the name out loud. You can you know if you wanna say it out loud you can. Uh, do you did you get the message for that baby, the young baby that um there's Chaya Liel Batali. There's also another young uh, two-year-old. That... I, I didn't know. I haven't looked at my phone in a really long day. So okay. so if you a... want to send it to me. Yes, I don't have the name on me, but she should also have a complete, complete refuah shlema. Whoever Lo'aleinu has been affected by the by this um, sickness should have complete, complete miraculous healing very, very soon. Whoever is going through their own private medical situation that needs healing from God, God should make miracles and miracles and everything should come benign and clear and healthy. My friend's father is also going through certain things, should have complete healing and health very, very soon. And if you have any names, please go ahead and share it if you want to. <laughs> Yes, please. Okay, Baruch, Ata, Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech HaOlam, Asher, Kiddishanu, Bemitzotza, Vetzivanu, Al HaFarish, Chala. Amen. And now you have to live and say, Harei Zohala. Azeh Ochala. 
Her is bracha. That's right. So I'm men, and you should have lots of bracha and hasracha. I'm gonna say the um, Yehira tone for it since you did the hafresha in English. So I'm saying it as your representative, okay? Okay, so may it be your will, our God and God of our Father, that the mitzvah of separating khala be considered as I observed every one of its details. May my rising of the khala be considered as the sacrifice that was offered on the altar, which was willingly accepted, just as giving the khala to the Kohen in the past served, served to atone for sins, so may it atone for my sins, and I shall be like a person reborn, free of sins and transgre transgression. May I be able to observe the holy Shabbat festivals. Um, are you married? Surely. Uh, Amen. Are you married? Yes. Okay. You have children? Yes. Okay, so may the festival with my husband and our children, and be nourished from the holiness of these days. May the influence of the mitzvah of Chala enable our children to always nourish by the hands of the Holy One, blessed be He, with His abundance, mercy, loving kindness, and great love. And the mitzvah of Chala accepted as though I have given a teeth, and now as I am fulfilling the mitzvah of Chala with all my heart, so may the compa compassion of the Holy One, blessed be He, be aroused to always keep me from sorrow and pain. Amen. And I'm also going to read the portion. Um, so th this is also, this is the portion that you, we can say for, so on the book of uh, Beshalach, it's, this is the part that it says that it happened to be on the sixth day that they gathered double a portion of food, two omers for each and all, and all the princes of, of the assembly came and told Moshe. So this is the verse that you can say if you end up not making the whole um, challah to be able to do the mitzvah of challah, which was the 12 cup plus of dough. This is the other in the book of Shemot, in the parashat Beshalach, is where we learn about the mitzvah of having two loaves of bread to say Hamotzian. And another thing that I wanted to share with you is that in this week's Torah portion, what's so beautiful is that when we come into the land of Israel, Bamidbar, Hashem tells us, when you follow my command and when you follow my mitzvot, it says that... Um, God comes and tells us that you shall, uh, sorry, one second. He comes and tells us that I will be the one that will be with you. I will be the one that will be near you. I will be with you on your way. And he tells us exactly where to put the Beit HaMikdash and where should every tent be. And what does the Beit HaMikdash resemble? The Beit HaMikdash is like the heart of the human being. You know, the heart is... In, in our chest, but yet affects the whole body. And that's what the Beit HaMikdash is. You know, the Beit HaMikdash was in the Midbar, and it affected the whole family. And parents, mothers, fathers, you know, they are like the heart of the family. Like their outlook of life, the way they explain the world to their kids, they become the source of life to their children. So it's always important that we know by having godliness in our life is not just about a textual book that we read. It's about how am I going to internalize godliness into my life by making a relationship and a connection with God. So it's this continuous connection and bonding that I have. And, um, oh, and, and another thing I wanted to share is that you know, we learn that when God was choosing the mountain of where to give the Torah, he didn't choose the tallest one. He didn't choose the biggest one. He didn't choose the one with all the trees and this and that. He went and amongst all the mountains, he chose the most smallest of all. Mount Sinai amongst the other mountains was the smallest. Why? Because God wanted to teach us that if you want me to be with you, you have to make place for me. 
when you are humble, when you are down to earth, when you have the recognition that I am part of you, that's when I will be there. But if you think it's all about you, if you think you're the one in charge of everything, then you have no room for me. So I hope to God that we will all be able to create a place for God in our lives, in our homes, in our families. And we should all be blessed with bracha, hatzlacha, health, goodness, and blessings for everyone. Thank you so much again for joining. Thank you so much for being part of this class. It truly was a pleasure. And I enjoyed it very much. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Questions? And I always love seeing pictures of it. I love seeing how your bread comes out because I think it's so beautiful to get to see how, you know, the same dough that gets measured and divided up. It's so wonderful to see how everyone's bread has its own unique look and its own unique appearance. So it makes you wonder, how could it be? It's the same wheat, it's the same flour, it's the same cup of white flour. Even like, you know, my kids put their doughs on a different tray, we put it in and they come out looking so different from each other. So I always tell them, it's your mindset. The thoughts you have in your mind as you're making that bread impacts your bread. Now imagine how much the thoughts and the way you talk affects your body. So we have to always be mindful of the thoughts we have because it really impacts who we are as a person. Thank you so much again for tuning in. It truly was a pleasure. And Bezrat Hashem, I look forward to seeing you guys soon again. Thank you. Thank you so much.